In a previous video, I showed you how you can take a single surface multicolor print from Tinkercad to your multicolor printer. And in that video, I got a lot of comments that why didn't I use the .obj release instead of .stl? So I'm going to use a multi-surface color print and release it as a .obj and bring that to my multicolor printer and show you how to do it on today's Film It Friday. This video is brought to you by the Film It Friday E-Leveler 2. It helps you level those classic 3D printers with the four knobs. Level each corner by adjusting it till the light just turns on, and you'll get a perfect first level print. So check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. In the previous video, I showed how you can take your multicolor object from Tinkercad and bundle group it instead of the union group. And what this allowed you to do is release a .stl file that you could bring into the slicer, right click, and split it into parts, individual pieces, just like it was in Tinkercad. And from there, you can get those individual pieces in the objects menu, and you can actually change the color here instead of painting by just clicking on it, clicking on the menu, and then clicking on the color. Now, some people commented, why did I use that drop-down menu and click, click, click? I could just use the keyboard. Other people said, what if you had a multi-surface multicolor? Could you use this method with that? And last, some people say, why didn't you just use the .obj method? Because that brings the colors across. So I decided to try it on a multicolor, multi-surface design, use the tricks about using the keyboard, and also explain how to do the .obj release and see if it really is better. So here's a multicolor, multi-surface CHEP cube. And each of these items is an individual piece that's put into a slot that's cut into the CHEP cube itself. So if I pop the X out, you can see there's a basically a hole cut out for the X. And I did this for each item. If I do the Z and lift that up, you can see it's cut out. And also the CHEP in the front, same thing. I'll just slide this to the side, and you can see it's all cut out. So there are separate pieces to this design, each one of its own color, but it's cut out in the back. And that was a little different than what I showed before, but this is a multi-surface, multicolored piece. And typically, like I showed before, I would use the bundle method. I would bundle it, not union group it, and export it as a .stl. Then when I brought it into Bamboo Lab Studios, I would do the same thing as I did before, is bring the item in. Now, these were all flush, so the letters don't really show up too easily, which is what I don't like about this method. If I have a little protrusion of the blocks, they're easier to read. But if I split them into parts and look in the objects menu, then I'll have all those individual pieces that I can select and then change the color. Now, I try to pass on knowledge that I learn onto you guys through my videos, but I also learn from people in the comments. They taught me how I can use the numbers to select the colors instead of the drop down, click, click, click. Let me show you that. So in the previous video, I would select the object, in this case, the letter H. I would click on the color block, then click on the new color, and then that would change the color of the element. And I had to do this for each one. And what I learned is you can just use a keyboard. Click on the number of the color, in this case four, and it changes to white. So I could do that for each one much quicker than clicking on the mouse three times. So that's a great tip from the audience. And if you've got multi-surface elements in the design, it still works. They show up in the objects menu. So just click on it, in this case the Y, and I can change the color by the keyboard to two. And then I click on the next one, X, change that to three with the keyboard. And then the last one, which is the Z, I made that into a blue as well by clicking on the keyboard. So yes, multi-surface works and the keyboard trick is great. Now I like to disable the prime tower if I don't need it. It's right there in the others menu. And then I slice it from there. And this one, when I sliced it with multi-surfaces, multi-color, it came out six hours exactly to print this and a lot of wasted plastic, but that's, that's multi-color printing. And when I scrolled down, everything looked just the way I designed it in Tinkercad. The individual letters are blocks right on the surface where it was cut out. So this looked good, and this bundle method that I've showed you before works with a multi-surface, multi-colored print. Now let me show you the .obj method. So it's the same from Tinkercad, except when you export, instead of .stl, you export it as a .obj. And what it actually releases is a .zip file. So you've got to unzip the file to get to the .stl file, which is inside this folder on my Mac. And it defaults to the name tinker.obj, no matter what the name of your file is. So you're probably going to want to rename that. 
but I'm going to bring in tinker.obj. I'm not going to change that. Bring it right into the bamboo slicer, and this is the screen you'll see. Now you'll notice it recognizes the colors, but it comes up with new ones. Color 5, 6, 7, and 8, not 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is on my machine. And that's because the colors in Tinkercad don't exactly match the bamboo slicer. And even if you click on color match or append, it doesn't do anything. You need to click on reset and then click on color match. And then it'll match the colors to the existing colors that's in Bamboo Studio. And this saves you the step of having to change all those colors in the objects menu like I showed with that drop down menu or using the keyboard. So it's definitely an advantage using .obj. As you can see here, it did all the colors and all the surfaces automatically. So now I'll get rid of the prime tower again in the others menu, and then I'm going to slice this to see if it's any different. So now I'll slice it, and I'm wondering how it's going to look inside and also how much time it takes. Well, same amount of time, six hours and five minutes, so five minutes longer, big deal. So it's about the same time, but scrolling through it, I did notice a difference. The colors bleed through just like I saw before in a previous video with other methods other than the bundle group. So it takes liberties with the colors and stretches them into the design not on the surface like I designed it in Tinkercad. So that's different just by using the .obj. I don't know why that is. Because I didn't rename the .stl file, Tinker becomes the name of the project. So if you rename it in the folder to the name that you want, then the project will adopt that same name. The .obj option works really well, but there's a few things you need to avoid or remember. When you unzip it and go into the file, change that Tinker.obj into a real name. And then when you bring it in and it shows you that five, six, seven, eight, make sure you hit reset and then color match. Because if you don't, it's going to bring five, six, seven, eight into your menu over here with the colors. And they're really meaningless because if you slice it and export it, the printer doesn't recognize those at all. It only knows it's one, two, three, four. And so those five, six, seven, eight, even though they didn't match in the slicer, the printer don't care. So if you open a new project, don't save anything it still shows up in the menu, that 5, 6, 7, 8. You've got to click on the three dots and delete each one. So now you've added a bunch of clicks that the OBJ was supposed to get rid of. So make sure you do that reset and then color match. Now because when I sliced it, the dot OBJ gave this bleed to the center, I wonder if I could put a hole in the center, and that way I could use transparent colors and glow from inside out. So I wondered how it would slice it if I put a hole in the center of the cube. So I tried it. I put a hole in the center, and then I'm going to export this as a .obj and run through the process again. So I was hoping that color bleed would go all the way into the hole, and it doesn't. It cuts it off before it gets to the hole. It makes walls around the hole, so it doesn't really bleed into the colors directly. You have to go through the red first. So that idea didn't work, but it was worth a try. I thought that would be an advantage to this that you could actually use transparent colors and make it light up. Now just above the hole, it still bleeds, but once you're into the hole area, it doesn't work. Yeah, it was worth a try. I use Tinkercad all the time, and it's nice to know that there's an easy way to take a multicolor print right into my multicolor printer using this .obj method. And because I don't print a lot of color, I'll probably forget and I'll end up watching this video. So I hope this video will help you as much as it helps me in the future. I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who are with me every month. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is the best way to do it. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollowbox Electronic Products and Filament Friday.